Hello everyone, someone just gave me this old RMI Electra piano and it is actually an electronic keyboard and unlike the Rhodes and the uh, Wurlitzer, it doesn't use tines, instead it uses transistors and all electronic components to build uh, the keys. And I'm going to play it for you, but I'm also going to be working on fixing it up and fixing lots of problems like flat notes, a humming sound, um, an overall low volume. And so right now I have it plugged straight into this tiny uh, little guitar practice amp. And it has been warmed up though for a couple minutes. So I'll show you what it sounds like. And there's lots of flat keys, so just keep that in, keep that in mind. So I've identified these keys here as flat ones, and we have one that is too quiet. I've already gone through and tuned every single key using this little adjustment uh, potentiometer inside the uh, inside the casing here, and there's one for every single key. And except for three of them, they were so far out of tune, the potentiometer was it was out of that range of what it could get to. And I found an instruction document, you know, a, a service manual online. And I'll post that in the in the video description, by the way. But I uh, describes how you can correct this, where if they're so flat that they're out of the range of the adjustment. So what this says you can do is you can remove uh, capacitance. You can remove capacitance to uh, correct ones that are too flat, and you can increase capacitance to correct ones that are too sharp. And so I uh, will try that out, and we'll see what happens. Okay, now here's a look at the inside of the electronic piano. You'll see all the little components. This is the power supply. Um, and for every key you press down, there's a bunch of capacitors. I think this is like a... A super old school transistor maybe I'm not sure and then these little uh, these little adjustments you can make here by twisting these that's how you tune it so now my C sharp is out of tune because I just I just messed with it so I think I'm gonna try and tune it one more time before I start working on the capacitors the service manual said to remove capacitance from any key that is flat and this one is flat, so it looks like it would be these capacitors here. So the E is flat, but this is turned all the way. You can only go flatter. This is as sharp as it can get. Okay, I'm going to do a little testing now of these capacitors using some meters here. And the first thing I want to do is check the resistance because if the capacitors are going bad, that will show up when you're checking the resistance. Except I don't really, for this I don't want to use this uh, digital one, I want to use this analog one. So as I connect the leads when I'm in the, testing the resistance, the needle will climb up to zero, but if, if it kind of jumps around a little bit, you know that something is wrong. And that's why you don't want to use digital, because you just have numbers flickering and you can't really see what's going on. So, we'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, there was some movement, but I think that was mostly because I was, was just from like me, you know, getting a, a poor connection. 
I guess it passed the resistance test. That one was looking fine, mostly. Kind of hard to tell, though. Another thing I want to point out, um, so this, you know, you think it would line up so that this is the G key, but nope, this actually is the F key. So it's, it's shifted over a little bit, and I guess like because they're kind of spaced out here, and then these ones are all kind of offset, and then over here, these ones start to come back together so that it all fits into the same length. Okay, and all the way over here on the right is a, an adjustment for, it says, common bias adjustment. And I have no idea what that is, and I, uh, it doesn't seem to do anything. It has nothing to do with the tuning. Um, maybe it's self-explanatory, I just don't know what common bias is, so I'll have to look that up. Okay, um... What I'm going to attempt to do is just snip off the capacitor if that's uh, the smallest one. So I'm working on the F here. And actually these are the ones that someone has already replaced all of them. And I don't know why, but it, even though they replaced all these capacitors, it's still too flat. And um, actually I already did this. I thought I was recording, but I only took a picture. <laughs> And as I was playing it, and I cut the smallest one, and it didn't really change anything at all. And then I cut the second the smallest one, and listen to this. And I think now it's within the range of the uh, little tuning adjustment here, and I can get it into tune. So maybe I have one of them fixed. Now, let me say, this is probably not the right way to do this, and the probably right way to do this is to replace all the capacitors. But that would be a nightmare. I can't. I just don't have the time to do that right now. So, um, I'll probably do the same thing for the other ones that are too flat. So, gotta tune the F1, and we'll see if I can get that in tune now. Okay, that worked out extremely well. That is now in tune. And so that worked out pretty well. I guess I'll uh, continue that and try it now with the E. Because the E, that's not, uh, that's a little bit out of tune. Not as badly as the F though. So, and um, you can't really read on here what they are, what the size is. And they're just so packed in here. So I'm just going to look at what is, what looks like the smallest one. And honestly for the E, there's only two it looks like. And I'm just going to kind of snip the lead right in the middle here and we'll see what that sounds like. I, uh, I did it for the D one. the D is out of tune. I'll have to fix that one. Okay, like I said earlier, it's not lined up. It's offset. It's offset with the key. So it's this one. I think that'll get it in tune. I'll have to get the soldering iron out and fix this little mistake. <laughs> okay, now on to the A, this one here, and we'll apply the same thing. This time I'll make sure, make sure I got the right one. All right, the A here comes up here actually, it's this one. And it's these two capacitors, so it's a lot different. There's only two capacitors and not three. And one of them is this foil wrapped capacitor. So I don't know which one is the bigger one, which one's the smaller one. So I'll have to take a closer look. 
Okay, with these two tiny little capacitors that I kind of squeezed in there, I can't read them at all. There's really no way to tell. So, um, but what's the worst that could happen is that I picked the wrong one and I'll just have to solder it back on. And as I just found out, that's pretty easy to do. So, I'll just uh, pick one at random and clip that one and see how it sounds. Okay, make sure it's the A one. bit higher. It's about equal as a uh, A sharp now. Almost. It's a flat A sharp. Alright, hold on. That might work. We'll see. I'm going to try and tune it with my phone again. With the uh, A note that was flat, um, I couldn't tell which, uh, what size the two resistors are, so I just cut one of them at random. Then it made it too sharp, so I soldered it back together, and after doing that, uh, it was mostly in tune. I could get it the rest of the way in tune with the, with the uh, little adjustment knob here. So... Uh, I don't know what that means. Is it kind of unstable? Did did heating it up change something? I don't know. But uh, I'll just go with it, I guess. So for the E note here, I had to replace this 0 0.08 microfarad capacitor with a 0 0.04 and 0 0.01 and a 0 0.01, which adds up to 0 0.06 microfarads. Okay, I'm going to play the song that I played at the very beginning of the video, but this time the, uh, all the notes will be in tune and not flat. So we'll see what that sounds like. the noise problem now because this thing makes a lot of hum and hiss and noise and there's a high-pitched hiss coming up the amplifier right now I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up or not it's a lot worse when the uh, organ mode is off This isn't very loud, like, I have it going through a little tiny amp, but that amp is turned all the way up and it should be way louder. So I want to get like a preamp, put a preamp in here. Um, I want to replace this power supply. People tell me that, that that's probably what is causing the hum. And, and then uh, the sustain. So right, so there's a jack here for the sustain pedal, it comes up from the bottom. But when there's no sustain pedal in, the sustain is always on. And there's a little jumper cable right here, a little jumper wire right here that is fixing that problem. But without it, there's the sustain. I think it sounds really bad. mode on it like creates this feedback and now it's feedbacking it sounds awful so um there 
me show you what I did there. There's a jumper wire going from the uh, positive on this, coming from I guess what you would call the positive uh, contactor on the sustain pedal jack, going to the ground on the power supply. So let me get my finger out of the way so you can see what I'm looking pointing at here. That's the ground on the power supply. It's connected here to the positive side of the input jack. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Um, I have it all uh, cleaned up and put back together and I screwed this piece back on and I made a few uh, modifications. I added this I added this uh, strip of trim right here and this is actually um, this was the grill from a Bluebird school bus made in like the early 90s. And well, I put I put it here so that I can put guitar pedals and effect pedals and synthesizers and whatever else you want on here and it can like rest on here and it won't slide off. Um, and then I hooked it up to a stereo instead of that amplifier to see if that would fix the, the buzz and the hum. And it actually is a lot quieter or maybe just from me playing it, it's gotten quieter like I've been breaking it in. Because um, yesterday I got it in tune and I, since, ever since then I've been playing it nonstop. And I think it's starting to sound great. And I'm starting to really like the sound of it. Because when I first got it, I turned it on and it was sounding horrible. It was super muddy. And the first thing I did was fix the sustain. It's another mod I want to show you. Um, I added a sustain button right here. Like I was saying about how uh, all I had to do is connect the wire from that the jack for the sustain pedal to the ground, then it would kill the sustain. So um, instead of having a pedal, I have a push button now. All right, where was I? What was I saying? So I'm certainly starting to like this. I like the sound a lot. I'm having fun playing with the different. play that'd be better but uh still learning okay right now i'm also using this uh pocket pod from 2002 or however long ago it kind of helps because it's if I, I turn the channel all the way up and that uh fixes the volume problem and but i think i want to get like an actual uh little preamp pedal that would be for a guitar probably because i don't think this thing has a preamp at all and i guess that's how they were made and i guess for now i'm not going to worry about the uh power supply because either it's fixed itself on its own, or um, it was the amplifier I was using that was causing a hum. And uh, sounds good to me now. So I think everything is good to go, and this project is done. So thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe, and maybe I'll have a follow-up video. Take care, guys. Peace out. Peace out.